All right, so let's just walk through what this graph means in terms of our variables. In this lab, we measure the diameter and the circumference of different circles. So those are our two variables, the diameter and the circumference. The independent variable in science is the one that the experimenter controls. And in this particular lab, it really could have been either the circumference or the diameter. But to keep things simple, let's just say that we are choosing circles with different size diameters. And we're looking to see how their circumference changes with that. This makes the diameter of our circles the independent variable. The circumference then is the dependent variable. So what we are looking at is how the circumference of the circle changes when the diameter of a circle changes. Now by convention, the independent variable is graphed along the x-axis and the dependent variable is graphed along the y-axis. After plotting our data, we get a best fit line that looks pretty linear to me. And we have a few ways that we can describe this in words. A linear line means that there's a constant rate of change between the two variables. So we can say that this is a constant relationship. Another term we use is direct. So linear, constant, and direct are all correct ways to describe this relationship because we have a straight line on our graph. All right, now every graph has the same basic parts. There's four main parts to a graph, okay, whether the line is straight or curved. We have the rise on the graph, we have the run on the graph, we have the slope, and we have the y-intercept. So when we talk about graph annotations, what we're really doing is we are defining what does the rise of our graph represent? What does the run of our graph represent? What is the slope? A lot of times in physics, the slope of our graph defines some physical property. So let's start with our rise. If we look on our graph, the rise is going to be on our y-axis, right? So that's, that's how much our graph goes up. So from one point to another, there's a certain amount that our graph goes up. So we can identify this. We can say that the change in the circumference is the rise of our graph. So what we say is, as we go up on our graph, as our line increases in the vertical direction on our graph, it is representing a change in the circumference of our circle. So that's the rise of our graph. The run is when we go across. So as we increase across our x-axis from one point to another, it's representing the change in the diameter of the circle. So our graph is looking at comparing how the run or the change in diameter causes the rise or the change in the circumference. Now you probably already know when you compare those two things to find the slope of your graph, you take the rise over the run. So in this case, we're taking the change in circumference and we're dividing it by the change in the diameter between two points on our line. And what we get is a slope. Okay, so that slope is that constant rate of change. It's how those two variables are changing in relation to each other. So in physics, we can use a graph to define some property. And that's what our slope is actually doing here. In this case, we are defining a constant. We've compared the diameter of a circle to its circumference. And since we got a linear relationship, we can say that this ratio is true for all circles, not just the ones that we measured, but all circles. This ratio, in this particular case, is the constant we call pi. So the slope of our graph, if we're talking about the diameter and the circumference of the circle, the slope of our graph is the relationship pi. So that's what the slope of this particular graph represents. It's defining a property of those circles. Now let's look at our y-intercept for a second. Stop and think about what the intercept is telling us. The intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. This is also the place where the value on the x-axis is zero. So think about this in terms of our variables. What is our x variable? In this case, it's the diameter of a circle. So the y-intercept is telling us what the circumference of a circle would be if the diameter was zero centimeters. And that makes sense. We'll come back to this number. So if you look on our Logger Pro thing right here, we do have a small number. We'll come back to that here in a little bit and talk about that a little bit more. But it makes sense, doesn't it? If you have zero centimeters as your diameter, you should have zero centimeters as your circumference. Because if you don't have a diameter, you don't have a circle. So this is a real quick run through of when I say annotating a graph, this is what I mean. We're really looking at what does the graph tell us specifically about our variables? And is there a relationship that we can get when we look at the slope or the y-intercept?